Hi, I'm Jason, and welcome to my presentation, Let's Build a CarPlay App. I'm a senior developer at Adapter, a mobile-centric dev house based right here in Perth. I'm also a volunteer instructor at Rockingham Dog Club. I like dog training as a hobby and have started competing in obedience and jumping with my Cocker Spaniel, Leia. First of all, I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors for giving me the opportunity to speak today. On this slide, we have a photo of the Wilson Parking app running on CarPlay. This is the second parking app in the world. It was so close to being the first. I implemented this functionality, and during this presentation, I am going to show you how to build a CarPlay app. Most new cars have started supporting CarPlay. This integrates your iPhone's operating system with your car's infotainment system, the touchscreen in your car. Once you plug your iPhone in to your car via USB, a CarPlay version of the iPhone's operating system will be displayed on your car's touchscreen. This will only include apps which support CarPlay. I personally use Spotify and Maps most of the time when I'm driving. There's a single app which runs on your iPhone. CarPlay is treated as an external display and has its own UI independent of the iPhone's UI. All the processing is still done on the iPhone. CarPlay is an Apple system and will only work with iPhones. Android has a different system called Android Auto. This presentation is focused on the Apple CarPlay system. Apple only allows a small handful of app categories to support CarPlay. Originally back in 2014 when CarPlay first launched, this was just audio, navigation and communication apps. Last year, as part of the iOS 14 release, Apple changed the way CarPlay works and expanded the supported categories to include EV charging, parking, and quick food ordering. Most UI frameworks let you create screens by nesting and arranging components as you like. In order to ensure CarPlay apps remain safe to use in the complex driving environment, this is a lot more restrictive. Instead, CarPlay apps Oh, sorry, I'll scratch that bit. Instead, CarPlay screens are created from a fixed set of templates. There are some examples on this slide, and there are more available. The CarPlay app programming guide contains documents, all the templates available. CarPlay apps decide when a template is, disp is displayed on the screen and what data is shown. The template handles everything else. All, sorry, um, sorry, I've just gone blank. Um, oh, all CarPlay apps will look and feel the same, as templates provide no styling options except in rare cases. This is great, as all CarPlay apps will. Um, this is great, as you can achieve a lot with a small amount of code. The downside is you can only do what the templates provide. User input is also very limited. In CarPlay, there are, there are no text fields. There is no keyboard. Templates only provide pressable controls like buttons, and Siri can be used for more complicated inputs. Your CarPlay app will also determine which templates it has access to. Some templates, like the list, can be used by all CarPlay apps. Other templates, like the point of interest, can only be used by EV charging, parking, and quick food ordering apps. The CarPlay app programming guide will tell you which templates your app has access to. Templates only display a small amount of information. For example, this template will display a maximum of 12 items. Each item will have a title, a subtitle, and maybe an image. CarPlay uses a stack for navigation and also limits the number of templates which can go on the stack. The quick food ordering apps can only have two templates on this stack, whereas all other CarPlay apps can have a maximum of five templates on this stack. Apple defines a bunch of guidelines which iOS apps must follow. When you have finished your app and are ready to submit to the store, Apple will check your app to ensure it follows these guidelines. If they think you have breached a guideline, your submission will be rejected. CarPlay has its own set of guidelines which must be followed. 
I will not bore you today by going over all of the CarPlay guidelines and instead have selected some of the main ones which I'll go over. The best place to check all of these guidelines is the CarPlay app programming guide. Um, the first one essentially means that your app must provide appropriate functionality for its category. So a parking app is expected to provide some sort of parking service. All CarPlay flows must be meaningful to use whilst driving. Apple, doesn't, Apple only wants us to include a feature in CarPlay if it's core to the app and makes sense to perform whilst driving. Features like maintenance, unrelated settings, and filling out forms should be left to be done on the iPhone when it is safe to perform these tasks. All CarPlay flows must be possible without interacting with the iPhone. Templates do not provide the same functionality as what can be done on the iPhone. You are not allowed to launch a screen on the iPhone to continue your flow. Instead, you have to look at either changing your CarPlay flow so that it will work entirely on CarPlay or remove that feature from CarPlay. And finally, you are not allowed to instruct a user to, mani to manipulate their iPhone to perform a task. It, you can quite common, uh, sorry, um, common air conditions can easily be resolved by performing a task on an iPhone. For example, a user not being logged in, you can simply prompt the user to log in. On CarPlay, you're not, you are not allowed to instruct the user to log in. Instead, you have to be clever about your error message, indicating something is wrong without tempting the user to touch their iPhone. Before we jump into the code, I'm going to go over the scope of the app we are going to build today. First of all, we are going to make a parking app. This is because we get access to the point of interest template, which is flashy and great for a demo. We're going to need an iPhone UI. In our case, it's going to be very complex and display hello world. Our CarPlay UI is going to display us car parks nearby, allow us to select a car park and navigate to a screen for more information. Before we can start creating CarPlay functionality, we first need an iPhone app. In our case, we're going to use the one auto generated by Xcode using Swift and iOS 14. Our app delegate class has been auto generated for us. This manages the lifecycle of the app and is the entry point for when the app starts. All this does, oh sorry, all, currently all this does is return our iPhone scene configuration. Our iPhone scene configuration will create this scene delegate which manages the lifecycle of the iPhone's UI. All this does is create a window and populate it with the content view, which will display Hello World. This scene delegate currently uses a Swift window, but we could change this to use whatever technology your iPhone UI is rendered in. The Wilson Parking app uses React Native to render its iPhone's UI. React Native is a lot more complicated to set up, and if you would like information about this, I have written a blog post which will be shared at the end of this presentation. We have an iPhone app. Let's start adding some CarPlay functionality. CarPlay will be written in Swift using the CarPlay API. To build our CarPlay app, we must first specify an entitlement in order to use CarPlay. Create a CarPlay scene to manage the lifecycle of our CarPlay UI. Configure, two, configure our app to use two scenes, one for CarPlay and one for the iPhone. And finally, construct some templates which will be displayed on the CarPlay screen. In order to use CarPlay, you need an appropriate entitlement. Each app category supported by CarPlay has a has an associated entitlement. This is because each CarPlay entitlement this is because each CarPlay entitlement unlocks different functionality from the CarPlay API. First, we must create an entitlements file and specify our parking entitlement, like what is shown on the screen. In order to deploy to a device or the App Store, we need an, we need the same configuration in an associated Apple developer account. Common entitlements like camera access can simply be configured. CarPlay is a lot more exclusive. You must first contact Apple and apply for the CarPlay entitlement. As part of this application process, Apple will check your company. 
and the app being developed. When we were working on the CarPlay functionality for the Wilson Parking app, we had to get Wilson to apply for the parking entitlement. Apple could see that Wilson is a parking company, they have a parking app, and we eventually got the parking entitlement. If your application is, is successful, you can then configure the entitlement through your Apple developer account. Our project does not have an associated Apple developer account, so it will not be able to, so it can only run in the simulator environment. Our CarPlay scene delegate manages the lifecycle of the CarPlay UI. All this does is create our first template and set it as the root. Our app delegate needs to change so that when CarPlay connects, we return the CarPlay scene configuration, otherwise we return the iPhone's scene configuration. Let's now have a look at making our first screen. Our first screen is going to show us car parks nearby. For the purpose of this demo, I have three markers on the map, which are three random locations. Sorry, can I restart that bit? Um, take that for water. Let's first, let's have a look at making our first screen. Our first screen is going to show us car park. Our first screen is going to show us car parks nearby. For the purpose of this demo, I have chosen three random locations around Perth, which you can see via the yellow markers. To achieve this, we are going to use the point of interest template, which has two modes. One mode shows us a list of point of interest objects, and another mode shows us different data when a point of interest has been selected. This code creates our point of interest object with three random locations around Perth, with the aid of a helper method. Sorry, I'll restart that. This code creates our point of interest template with three random car park locations with the aid of a helper function. Our helper function simply creates a point of interest object and returns it. This will add a button at the bottom of our point of interest object so that when it is selected in the point of interest template, we will see more details which will navigate us to the next, to the next screen. Our next screen is going to show us more specific information about a selected car park. To achieve this, we're going to use the information template, which is a couple of items in the center of the screen and a button at the bottom, which takes us back to the previous screen. This code creates our point of in our sorry. This code creates our information template with our list of items displayed in the center and our done button, which takes us back to the previous screen. Let's now see this code running. On our iPhone simulator, we have the CarPlay demo app. This doesn't have an icon because I've just not set one up. When we press this, we get our iPhone UI, which will display Hello World. On our CarPlay simulator, when we press our CarPlay demo app, we'll get our CarPlay UI which displays our screen containing car parks nearby. You can see the three markers. Our list on the left containing three car parks. We can select a car park showing us different information about the car park. We can select more details, which will take us to the next screen showing us in more information about the selected car park. We can then press our done button, which takes us back to the previous screen. Not everything can be tested in the simulator environment. CarPlay functionality can differ on actual CarPlay devices. For example, in the demo you just saw, the information template shows the data area on the left. And then it's um, on the screen, we have a photo of the Wilson parking app, which is also using the information template, which shows the data area on the right. This is because the photo is showing, a, showing an Australian CarPlay device. When developing the CarPlay functionality for the Wilson Parking app, we had to test on cars which supported CarPlay as well as the CarPlay device, which you can see on the slide. If you would like to play further with the demo you just saw, you can download it from my GitHub.
The CarPlay app programming guide documents all the information you need to build a CarPlay app. If you would like more information on CarPlay development, I've written a blog post which is available here. And finally, you should check out what my awesome colleagues, at, colleagues and I get up to an adapter, as we'll quite often feature blog posts on our website. Thanks everyone, that's the end of my presentation.